This playthrough is rated M for Mature. Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of loving you. Greetings and salutations, viewers. While we're back with another episode of Shadowrun Returns. In the last episode, we went to the Matrix and found some information about the killer. Uh, his name and possibly uh, ties to each other. So now we got to find uh, someone that was close, well, close, quote unquote, to get more information, um, you know, about a dead man. So this is interesting. But anyway, before we head on, let's... Uh, talk to a few of our guys and buy some stuff before we go to the next section. David looks almost as tired as you do. You can tell that the case has gotten under skin like it has yours. Any luck there? We found an exact match for the DNA and it was linked to a dead chop shop assistant by the name of Silas Forsberg. Now nah, I have my theories, but what do you think is going on here? Oni Fist? Uh, maybe Silas faked his death. Silent. Silas must have an identical twin brother. The DNA evidence doesn't belong to the killer. I guess that's still a possibility. You seem pretty sure when we... Uh, got here that it did. What about Silas's autopsy report, though? Anything stand out? The uh, see, simple suicide. He killed himself with a drug overdose. He was killed by sedatives, but the coroner still thought he had ripped his own face off. The face was so mangled that they had to use dental records to identify him. Good catch. That matches up with something I've seen runners try. It's easy enough to find a body shop that'll make a replica set of teeth for you. Find some schlub off the street no one'll miss. Swap the teeth and throw the heat off your trail for a while. Lucky I've never been that desperate. But why would he need to go through those links? Did the police records have something linking him to a different crime? Uh, maybe he had a core gun, uh, corp, core gunning for him. Maybe he probably got over his head on loans. Chop shop assistant and pay well. He had a prior prior frontal license, plastic surgery. True. Wouldn't look too good on someone's record if they wanted to become a doctor. I think this is beginning to come together. The late Silas left all his belongings to a doctor, Doctor Holmes. Employment records have him at the administration. Administrator Mercy Mental and the pictures of his file match the person you saw downtown. The same person this DNA belongs to. All the evidence points to him being your killer, whoever he is really. Finally, I can bring my fan Sam's murderer to justice. I, can I should go find this Dr. Holmes and ask him some very pointed questions. Guess I'm about to get a big payday. This guy clearly did not want to be found. If I was you, I'd hire a team before heading over there. Anyway, for doing the job, Johnny gives us 4,000 yen, so that'll help out hire a few dudes. You're not, I'll see you later. You're not coming? Oh, sorry. I siloed a ton of valuable data from those Lone Star Matrix nodes. Here's your cut. You're not coming? I think my part here is done. You might want to go sticking your hand in a hornet's nest, but I'm a little more wary of the jobs I take these days. Yeah, well, all right. All right, now we need to, our new objective is to uh, um, hire runners for the Mercy Mental Hospital case. Okay, so yeah, we're finally getting jobs kind of back to back where we're getting more action. Despite the hour, Buster is fastidiously put it together in a rather wrinkle-free shoot. He shows every indication that he's been up for hours, sunk to his elbows in a dozen crates, and each containing objects of sinister met black hidden beneath curl, uh, curls of straw, colored packing foam. The foam flies about as he inventories the shipment, clinging to every surface except for Buster's immaculate suit. Just in time, I've got a full slew of new toys in from a supplier back east. Factory fresh and the smelling of the mother's gun oil. Maybe there's something in this batch that you'd be interested in? How long have you been in this trade, Buster? Well, let's see. I left Calfrey on July 8, 2038 at 6.13 in the morning. It was a Thursday. From there, I wandered a bit. Applied my trades as a merc in a half a dozen different floors, official and otherwise. Never mind, did take, never did take to running the shadows like some of the boys I knew. Too subtle for my taste, I suppose. Surely there was no sorts of full-scale engagements to be had, so I didn't run to work. Might still be doing it today if I hadn't lost the arm. Uh, replacement looks always up to ask. Let me guess, but <laughs> how'd you lose it? Let me guess, boating accident. Buster lets loose a rakish laugh. A uh, rankous laugh that seems at odds with his prime exterior. It was all so stupid. Some Aussies were lobbing smokers behind our lines, more to mess with us than anything. I decided to toss one back, and, and didn't it just figure that the one I grabbed ain't a smoker. I got it off, but only just barely. Shredded my old arm, but good. Got plenty of other scars to remember the moment by as well, but the arm was the big one. So I take a word, a word of advice from an old soldier. Make sure you're never holding a grenade in one hand unless you just pull the pen with the other. Now, if I haven't given you reason to doubt my uh, professional competence, how about we talk turkey? What can I get you? Well, let's see what you got. I don't think 
I mean, you sell guns, and I'm not playing a gun character. I guess technically I could buy grenades. But, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I could buy some smoke grenades, you know, maybe swap out or maybe concussion grenades. But I'm always running in, and, uh, and well, I could always give the smoke grenades actually to my allies. And they could throw it um, in my general direction. That's not a bad idea. Actually, I'll buy... Uh, whoops, I don't want to buy drone. Repair. Uh, yeah, I'll buy... I'll buy... I'll buy two smoke grenades, why not? I'll just leave them in the stash. Alright. Let's see. Okay, so... Let's see. Murdersman, I don't think you have anything new, but let's check. There's a cockroach, Mugs! That's the protein boost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what's a fly doing in my soup? The backstroke, sir. Need some new armor? Well, let's see if you got anything new. Oh, finally! I thought it was about time we were about to get some new armor. Let's see what we got here. We got the uh, Ganger Mask. Taking off a dead Ganger, which seemed like a good idea at the time. Quickness plus one. HP plus five. That wouldn't be bad. Refurb UCAS shot gear. UCAS uh, mill spec that's customized for the shadows. Grants plus one strength and plus five HP. Oh, that'd be good for me. Uh, either Adept or uh, Samurai character. Let's see. Alley Mage Outfit, Armor 4. Mage Wear for those who live on the streets. Grants Willpower, plus 1. HP, plus 5. Uh, and then we got the other. So the new one is Ganger Mask, Reefer, Shot Gear, and Mally Age Wear. Or Mally. Alley Mage Outfit. Wow, what's wrong with me today? Let me check my uh, situation really quick. So. So I'm just thinking if I want to do strength or quickness overall. Because strength would allow me to hit better. Uh, but quickness would allow me to dodge physical attacks. I might do the strength in this case. Since that seems to be what I'm doing more often anyway. So... Really do have, let me see, dodge. Yeah, I think I'll go with strength in this case, so. Well, that's a tough one. Either way I want the I want the bonus and the plus to HP either way. Yeah, let's go with strength. So we'll go with the refurb usage. UCAS shot gear. So let's swap out our uh, uh, ninja clothing. Ooh, nice. <laughs> we look like a punk rocker. Rock on! Actually, with my outfit, I look like I look like I should be in like uh, Black Sabbath or something like that. Like, uh, or what's that one guitarist that has like the the mutton chops? Crap! I, I'm not. Sorry uh, for those rockers out there. You probably remember all the. Uh, oops! <laughs> it took a while for the game to load. Let me sell the old uh, ninja gear. I don't need that anymore. So, all right. <laughs> yeah, I do like a rocker, especially with my mohawk. Uh, oh yeah, I need to. Algernon looks the same as always. So much to, to, so much so that one may wonder if he ever takes time to eat or sleep. Perhaps his presence on this plane of existence is substantial enough that he isn't subject to such base needs, or perhaps he just does these things when no one is looking. I choose the latter. Dark clouds surround you, my friend, but perhaps there's something I could provide you with to help ways that w w with whatever weighs so heavily on you. What's new in the world of magic, Algernon? The spirits are stirring. Something has upset the natural order. There's something new. Different. Uh, it seems like something new every day. What is it this time? Not much natural about spirits to begin with. I've seen some dark dreck lately. Might be what you mean. Algernon takes a hard look at you for what may be the first time, but this is the hard look of a magician whose eyes pierce the veil of reality and burrow through a man's soul. I could see you have met with disturbing visions, but there is something else out there, something not born of life, as other spirits are. Shaking his head, Algernon opens his glass hands to you as if begging forgiveness. Too often this world leaves us confounded. I pray I have no not left you in such a state with my idle musings. Please, can I be of service today? Well, hold on a second, so... Let me see if I have enough points to upgrade my willpower even more so I get another ability. I should have enough. So let's see, willpower. So I could go with Counter-Strike. Let me see if that's worth building up right now or not. 
I mean, there is some physical attacks, but it doesn't happen as often as you realize, despite the game having add-ups and stuff like that. You mainly get shot at first before anything. So, I mean, it happens. It's just not as common as I would like. Uh, let's see. Uh, that just turn ends, and we'll counterattack with any weapon. That's... But you have to have the AP for that. You have to turn it on to do that, though. That's one of the things you do at the end. Um... Of your turn, so... Uh, yeah, sure, we'll do that. <clears throat> kind of the middle of the road stuff isn't as useful, I personally feel, than, than like later abilities. But... Let's yeah, buy that. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to think if I want to build up close combat. More hold off. I really need to start building a body at some point to get more HP, cause I'm cause I'm in the front I'm in the fray every every second. So, but I like holding off, uh, holding a little bit of karma just in case. So, yeah, let's go ahead and buy the. Uh, I mean, technically, I could buy all the abilities right now. It's just cause I have the money, but I wouldn't be able to equip them or anything like that. So, so no point. All right. Let's get out. Oh, uh, do you want to buy anything from the doctor? Maybe some healing kits, just in case. Just one glance is all you need to tell the good doctor is exhausted. Her crumpled scrubs are strained with a mix of blood and other fluids too colorful to be naturally occurring in the human body. Her eyes are those of a person who has built up a substantial sleep debt. Has no idea when or how to begin paying it off. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that when it comes to sleep. You can't just lose all the sleep and then sleep for 12 hours and get it back. That's not how your body works, as much as we wanted to believe it is. I'm not one to talk, but you look like Drek. Afraid there isn't much I can do for that. Dr. Castle snaps her fingers and calls forth the spirit normally seen perched on his shoulder. It appears from out of the ether, and the doctor immediately seems less fatigued when she, she uh, than she was a moment before. Probably cast like a healing spell, rejuvenation or something like that. Uh, everything all right there, Doc? Uh, she said, what can I do for you? Hear the union? Yes, fine. I'm just getting back to myself. Days here tend to be slow, so I volunteer at a medical center on the other side of Tr Trusville. I had a rough shift. Uh, care to talk about what happened? I imagine most shifts in the Barrens are rough ones. By any measure, yes, they are, but today was especially difficult. I didn't hear all the details. All I really know is what came in on the lips of the victims he healthily enough to still speak. Apparently, one of the Barrens' gangs incurred the wrath of the local Salupa rings, leading to a rolling shootout throughout the city streets. Several bystanders were injured. By the, but the real mess didn't begin until the party crashed into the yard of an old industrial plant out on Union Hill Road. They woke some sort of toxic spirit, which then began running amok, causing easily as much damage as the initial battle. Don't want to fight a bunch of uh, grangers, or what was it, mucks, uh, and uh, coughings from you know, Pokemon or whatever. And we were left to pick up the pieces, of course. But enough about my troubles. Let's hear about what, tell, uh, tell me what ails you. And uh, let me see about medical supplies. Uh, let's see. Um, I mean, we do have the trauma kit still, so we're good with that. Uh, probably should start buying advanced med kits just in case I start getting smacked pretty hard. Yeah, let's buy a, a regular and an advanced. Put it in the stack for now. Alright, anything else around here that I need? Oh, got Mr. Delilah there to put together that crew. Shh, still sleeping there. But there's no one else in there. Anyway. Oh, there's some of the some of the shadow rows we saw before. Change the damn channel. After my soaps are over. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's talk to Mr. Delilah. You're looking for runners again? I'm your guy. Discreet service only. Uh, any higher crew. Alright. So this time we can choose whoever we want for the crew. Um I think. Is it the same people as before? I think so. Uh oh, we got a few new ones here. Or, wait, no, I think she was there before. No, there's a couple of new ones. Um, oh, no, I think she was there before. Never mind. But, yeah, Shannon is available again. However, this time she is not required. However, since she's free, uh, go and take her. Why not? Um, let's see. I thought, was she? Th I think she was uh, there before. So, before, probably a good idea to take another uh, samurai with you. Um, so... Let's take the full Monty again, since we've got the money for it. Oh yeah, the Nephilim Network's still here. I think it's the same people as before, too. I don't think they added anyone in this case. Nope. So, but yeah, let's take full Monty again, since we have the money. And this time we actually want to take a Decker with us, since I'm not a Decker myself. Uh, 
Who do you want to tag? In this case, I'm not particular. Maybe Cronaw, just because she's got an Uzi. Let's see. Uh, we got Execute Attacker and Shield Expert Program. And she's got Assassin Program and Shield Expert Program. So she's more, I think she's she's more of the Decker uh, than Shiny Bit. Shiny Bit has more combat stuff. So, um, do I want another ranged attack? Well, I mean, we'll already, I'm already the, usually I don't want to get everyone into close combat. So, yeah, let's go with Krona for this one. So, mainly because there's something we can get with her decking ability, so. Yep, uh, head to Mercy Mental Hospital to confront Dr. Holmes. Perhaps Dr. Holmes is the killer. Mercy Mental Hospital. The blood you found at the warehouse belongs to a man masquerading as one Dr. Holmes, and you tracked him to Mercy Mental Hospital, located in the notoriously anti-metahuman farmlands of Snohomish. The drive to the hospital is long and unpleasant. Finally, you reach the walled and gated hospital compound. Despite the pretense of security, the gate is unguarded, unlocked, and open. No one stops or greets you as you drive up the large, crumbling building. Gothic ramparts top a damaged roof, cracked walls, and broken windows. All around the building is a long-gone wild. Well, only the artificial light from within speaks of inhabitants. You walk up the hospital steps to confront Sam Watts' killer and bring an end to the Emerald Sea Ripper. Because this will be the end of it, am I right? This, one, this area, this section here is a bit longer than others. I wouldn't say difficult, but... And yeah, you see on the last uh, thing I gave um, Shannon a med kit, but now it's not there. Because yeah, that gets removed from your inventory and you lose it. So... It, but her her totems are still there. Like I said, they respawn. However, she's leveled up since last episode, so now she has the slow two command as opposed to before. So they kind of build up. That's why uh, Full Monty cost a little bit more because I think he cost like what was eleven hundred before. Now he costs fifteen hundred because he leveled up too. Uh, they got karma boosts and stuff like that. So um, let's see. And then yeah, Full Monty. Um, his stats are changed. Oh, he actually looks similar to me. I just noticed that. Uh, and then Karna here. Yeah, she already has anything in that. So I might give her the extra kit I bought, the healing, just in case. Um, yeah, let's give her one of those. And uh, yeah, I think we'll be fine on that. Just a little extra healing since, like I said, we don't have... Uh, I could give her the advanced one too. Because like I said, the section is a little bit longer. So we might end up taking more damage. Although if I give it to myself, I uh, swap out one of these and give it to myself. That way I don't lose it when it's over. So, uh, Yeah, I think that'll work. Okay, let's go. Time to go to the hospital. As soon as the game wants to load. Took a hot minute. So. All right, there's our nice old team right there. So, Yeah, and unfortunately there's no story implement for bringing half sky here. She's just free, so... Hello, receptionist. Welcome, sir. What business brings you to Mercy Mental Hospital? I'm here to visit a patient. I'm here to see Dr. Holmes. I'm investigating a murder. Oh, we take security here very seriously. We haven't had a patient escape in over 60 years. What? Escape? Yeah, did you see all the, the barred gates and everything like that? Uh, I'm not looking for a patient, just information. 60 years? Who's the last one to escape? Oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a badge? Who sent you? Uh, I'm a freelancer. I'm working for the family of a victim. I sent myself. I'm just following the evidence. I see. Well, I'm afraid our policy prevents us from discussing such things without a corporation backing the investigation. It's really you understand. Uh, I understand it is possible. Uh, I understand it is possible. I can speak with the hospital administrator. I can't leave empty-handed. All I could do is arrange a meeting with the administrator. He might be able to help you. Please wait in the common room up ahead, and I'll notify him. All right. All right. Uh, our new objective is look around before. Uh, Baker arrives. Investigate Mercy Mental Hospital. All right. Let's see. Please stay within the cafeteria. I got a lot door there. Oh. Let me see if there's anything we can interact with. Doesn't look like it. Nope. I got nothing there. Can't go in there yet. There's a little interactive. Let's see what that says. It's a lot of main medication dispensary. It doesn't recognize you, so nothing happens. That's how you get your pills, huh? Oh, there's Donnie. Oh, there's a... There's a um, computer we can hack. Let's see what Lorraine says. Hey, guy, have you seen Josie? Uh, I don't think so, and I don't have time for this. Maybe I have. Wait, you saw him? No, no, wait. You've never I, I've never seen you. You can't have seen Josie. You're not a doctor either. Oh, I just, I really f feel lost without him. Josie always helps me out. 
Uh, Josie sounds like a pretty quite a guy. What's he look like? What's so important about Josie's character? Wait, Josie's a man? He's the man. You know how it is when you saw him. He used to be an urban brawl star. He says he was on the Screamers for a while in the glory days. He looks the part, so I believe him. He's got a super brawl gold ring he always wears. Uh, I'm not familiar with the urban brawl. I think that's just like a gladiatorial thing, all that. Or maybe a form of football. Like I said, I don't know everything about the Shadowrun universe. I can see an ex-brawler becoming a celebrity around here, sure. So Josie couldn't take the pressure and ended up here. What a slot. Urban brawl, huh? That's a rough profession. What a slot. Hey, it ain't like that. You don't know him. The team man manager's face laced his few with battle boost drugs. Josie likes his head clear, but they don't listen. It's not his fault he crushed that guy's throat. Uh-huh. Will you at least help me look for him? I have this key I swiped off the day guard, but they keep a close eye on us. You could have a peek in the infirmary and see if there's a record or something. He might just be in a cool-off room, and they won't tell me. Uh, I can see. Uh, uh, I'll see if I can find something to promise it. What's in for me? No sweat. I can do that for you. What's in for me? Well, you can keep the key. Oh, I got another one thing. The guards keep some supplies in the bathroom lockers. I bet you can find some nice stuff there. Hmm. Oh, all right. Get a little mission item, the infirmary key. We can do that. All right. Let's see. What's this thing? The clock stopped, probably displaying a time of 40 years ago. What's this guy have to say? Hello, stranger. You do here? Oh, you do here. I'm looking for Dr. Holmes. I'm doing a health and safety check for the corporate office. I should go. Uh, I'm only first here you. Corporate office. Well, you don't want to talk to me. I don't work here. I'm not crazy enough for that. Uh, I'm only first here you. My name's Donnie. My name's Donnie. Donnie. D-O-N-N-Y. M-I-C-K-E-Y-M-O-U-S-E. -E. I knew I didn't recognize you. I knew everyone in this place. Everybody. Well, everybody on the first two floors. Uh, and when I sh uh, how long have you been here, Don? And when I should look out for Donnie? No, not on this floor. Only us cl cl calm ones are allowed up on the cafeteria. If you're violent, you have to eat in your room. I'm looking for Dr. Holmes. Donnie face blanches. I don't think you really want that. Not really. What's that supposed to mean? Sounds creepy, son. Around here, you don't want to attract the attention of the doctor. If you stay quiet, life is much easier. Much easier. I should go. <laughs> what are we putting on a, uh, um, uh, a, uh, sure, when, when are you on a break? Must be talking to someone. Why is he putting on a shepherd all of a sudden? You know, I should go. I should go. Anyway, now that we got the key, we can go in here. Uh, anything in here? No. Oh, what the? That's not good. The stench of blood and mold gets ever stronger as you move closer to the infirmary. Hmm. Let's take a look. A severed arm lies next to the zip body bag. The arm, <laughs> put him in a body bag! The arm looks human and apparently neatly severed at the elbow. There's a large gold ring on the index finger. Its owner is probably the occupant of the bag. And eh, let's take the ring. You slip the heavy ring of the cold finger and it feels like it weighs in your hand. Inside is an engraving. It reads Screamers 2048. Well, we know what happened to Josie. He did. You find an unlabeled uh, uh, trivia disc. You have no way of playing back the disc at this time. Or, yeah, trivid. Trivid, I mean. The surgical card is thrown with gruesome tools and. Ah, dang it. It disappeared before I could read it all. Sorry about that. What's this say? The patient information on Josiah C. Dawson is open on the cyber terminal. Read the medical history. Name Josiah D. C. Dawson. Date of birth 7 18 2015. Height 1.9 meters. Weight 95 kilograms. Occupation retired. They're using European measurements. Uh No, I'm just kidding. Allergies none. Medications. Uh, Prozolam uh, and Rebexatine. Reason for stay, post-traumatic stress disorder. Status deceased. Yeah, he was deceased, all right. Read the attached notes. Patient has undocumented cyber in the left arm, as well as multiple pieces of shrapnel in various locations. Complications will likely arise if transplanted in another host. The rest of the body is in excellent condition. It can be used to improve our other subjects, as well as fulfill some other custom requests. So they just piecemealed him in. Lovely. That's why a lot of people don't want to be organ donors. And they think the idea is that if you're an organ donor, they will they won't try their best to save you because, you know, you, uh, you're an organ donor. They're like, oh, we need these, you know. Like, you know, they're going to chop you up and all and whatnot. Hmm. Can't check that out right now. We can eventually, just not right this second. Uh, so, what, did you see anything? Uh, I'm not sure how to put this. Yeah, Josie's not looking too good. Josie's dead. Yeah, not looking too good. Is he sick? Why won't they let me visit him? 
Uh, I don't know what happened, but it looks like he's dead because he's a corpsicle, okay? Well, it looks like Josie's going to be playing with a super wall in the sky from now on, and, uh, yeah, because he's a corpsicle. Eh, let's get him. Actually, we don't really need the ring, do we? Because I don't think we could do anything with it, so maybe you should have this. You mean, oh, God. Well, thanks for your help. The noise of scratch PA system blasts through the room. Attention, Onifis, please report to the North Hall to meet with the administrator. Hmm. Alright. Then we gain two karma for solving that, so. Uh, let's see. I don't think I showed off. Let's see. No, oh, what the design. Like I said, I think it's another Kickstarter backer. Anyway. Oh, there he is. He wasn't there before. What the? We've seen this guy before. The elf standing before you may quite possibly be the ugliest elf you've ever seen. His meticulously clean lab coat, format jacket, and an old-fashioned bow tie give him the look of an undertaker for centuries past. As you approach the window, he locks eyes with you, smiling a thin, unnerving smile. Good day. How can I help you? Um, Dr. Holmes, I presume you're a hard man to reach, especially considering you're dead. You Holmes or Silas or whatever you're calling yourself at the moment? Dr. Holmes, a.k.a. Silas Forsberg, how about we chat? I'm afraid you're confused. Silas Forsberg was a patient here who died tragically in a fire. Uh, all right, if that's how you want to play it, Dr. Holmes, I have a reason to believe you're involved in Emerald City killing riffings. Cut the act, Doc. I know you're kill you killed the real Holmes, and now you're running around town carved up people for your parts. It was a good racket what you had going here, but you got sloppy with your kills, and now the Ripper's trail leads straight to your door. The only trail I see is the one you have left in your own wake. I believe I... I in fact, I believe the Ripper may be standing right in front of me. Gods? Uh oh, gain two karma for that, and we get attacked by the guards. Yeah, on the ground now. All right, anyway, let's uh, wreck this the hospital guard. So, uh, actually, since we've got some time, let's go ahead and just cast haste on this so we can just wreck his day. Now we can just blast him multiple times. Actually, I probably could just punch him multiple times, probably finish him off, or at least do a decent amount of damage. <laughs> nice. That critted him into oblivion. Alright, we can go this way, however. Let's see if I can access it now. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. <coughs> okay, well, let me... Let me see. Hold on, let me move him. Right, let's go to the decker. Now I can actually show off the decking program when you're actually in combat. Because you can, in combat, go through um, the Matrix and do certain things. You get different actions. Like, you can do so much in the Matrix before it swaps back to combat. Um, I'll show you here. Uh, let's see. We're using our Rinraku Kraftwerk. We've got Medic fair, Firewall, uh, which creates a wall of fire. Basically, it protects you so if someone moves into it, they take damage. Um, suppression. And Killer 2, a little bit better than Johnny Queens. And we've got ESP, a couple of ESPs. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting to use the ESPs when I'm playing, but it's not. Let's see. Uh, okay, we actually talk to the receptionist. Uh, it seems that a good Dr. Holmes has something special planned for you. I'm afraid I can't let you leave. Uh, why would you do this? You know you won't get paid after I kill your boss, right? You made a huge mistake. Good th look in the basement. Holmes and Peitzel are waiting. Yeah, we can't really. And he runs off. Anyway, yeah, we're in the Matrix now. So we got the Matrix door control. And then we got a little extra area to go to. So, let's see, we got three actions in this case. So, oh. Yeah, we've, uh, the alarms are set off. But luckily, all we have is a, a couple white ICs here. So, let's see. Yeah, unfortunately, you don't have. Uh, her killer program does 100 damage, which is nice. Um. Let's see, can I see these guys? Oh, I can see you. Nice, yeah, 100 damage, takes him out. Yeah, I guess let's hide behind the thing. Alright, yeah, let's kill her again. Ah, alright, let's type the door controls. Hacked bathroom door lock. Alright, let's see what else is else we can do I think it's like every three turns you're in the matrix it goes back to uh, um, no, no. okay it goes back to the combat but let's see. 
Let's see if I hit. Nice. I think these guys have like 125 or 150, something like that. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, that was more like, well, two, three, whatever, but. Anyway, you just had to. Basically, there's really no reason to continue on. We can just wait till, uh. Till we're ready to go. So, we want to wait till she's out of the matrix before we continue on, so. Nice. Alright. Let's finish you off. Alright, let's get the server records. Uh, hacked record, private records data store. So, all right, let's get out of here. Yeah, we have to move her out of the matrix. So, all right, let's get out of here. All right. Let's see, so let's go. Let's have you go to the bathroom here. Oh, and there's some stuff in the bathroom. So. Actually, let's uh, cast a uh, stride on ourselves so we can move a lot faster. Wee 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 wee. Alright, we get a uh, Fischetti Concussion Grenade, so let's put that in the stash. I think... Let's see... I thought there was another... Maybe it was just the grenade. I could have swore there was like another um, thing we could grab in here. Aha! And we also get a med kit. Nice. Uh, do I want to take off one of the nitros just in case? Yeah, let's swap out just in case we need the healing or whatever, so. Alright, let's set. Uh, let's get everyone in here before we start moving. Because we're still in, like, combat mode or whatever, so we have to, we have to follow the rules of combat. We have to follow all the rules. Let's see, I'll just move you over there. Just want everyone in the general area so we can, before we pop in. Now, that's the only problem I have with this is that if you're outside of combat, you, uh, even if you're in combat, you still have to follow the rules of engagement, you know, stuff like that, so. All right. There's another guy right there. There's a hospital guard. Let's see, probably wanna let me end a turn first before we do that and then we'll attack him. That way I've got enough uh, actually do I wanna have you go first? Can you shoot him for me? Probably not. I didn't think so. Let me go and get the get the shotgun on you. Ooh, 36 damage. Holy cow. Yeah, we crit him. Big time. And yeah, basically by going through the bathrooms, hacking the bathrooms, you get a chance to just basically sneak them on. Because if you go through there, you get you get attacked, like almost in, well, I wouldn't say instantly, but. All right, let's go. And yeah, just move everyone up. And prepare for next level entry. And the good thing about like not immediately being in combat, you can do stuff like uh, reload your weapons and stuff like that, so. Let's uh, reload a shotgun. Let's see. We're not. We're good. Huh? I was just checking some stuff. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh. So even though there's people there, we can't do anything with that because we have to go to the next screen. So. Oops. Oh, yeah, I guess everyone has to do that, so. Alright. Yep, confirm exit. And confirm exit. Halls of disrepair. As you venture deeper into the asylum, you see that the inside is very bit as bad as the outside. Gone is any attempt to uphold sanitary hospital aesthetics. With pe peeling paint, cracked floors, and exposed conduit, the pretense of mental care is shattering, 
shattered. In this modern a era, Mercy Mental Hospital is a throwback to the barbaric asylum of old, prisons and torture chambers rather than places of healing. It's clear that Dr. Holmes is spending his money on something other than this, this facility. You continue on. Holmes can only run so far. As we wait for the game to load. Isn't the whole point that they get to that point is that loaded? But can Holmes run back so far? Will we have to deal with more of the hospital garden? What about the patients? Are they so crazy that they'll put their lives on the line to attack us? Find out next time in the next episode of Shadowrun Returns. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.